this. But uh, for our system, you just want to download this. Um, and uh, it's about 50 megs, and it'll take you a while, so let's actually not do that. I happen to already have a copy. Really um, and that's good to you. Oh, wait, I need that. Why am I doing that? Oh, well, I was going to try to install it. But, uh, so when you you're going to get uh, something like this. Uh, this is where you're actually going to download. I'm sorry for all the crap here. It's because I'm a developer, and I have actually tested all the versions. Um, <laughs> but when you would get it, you just go and say, let's untar it. Uh, let's do a pipeline. Um, and that's pretty much the install procedure. Um, <laughs> It just untars, um, you go in here and a bunch of cool stuff. There is first the, uh, the documentation, the ASP book, that PDF. You can see all fancy names on it. Um, and then we have a tutorial that is about the Mars Orbiter camera. And then we, we show such an old tutorial just because Mars Orbiter camera imagery, it's like you know, 10 megs in size. You can do that in one sitting and not feel uncomfortable. Um, we won't do that. We're going to do something more fancy. I'm going to show high rise CTX or LRNAC. We'll take a photo for a moment. Um, and then the executables are inside the bin directory. Um, and you can just execute them right away. They're ready to go. Nothing to set up. But you probably would like to execute them in different directories. So uh, I'd recommend adding this directory to your path variable. If you guys are not Linux guys, uh, path is just um, whenever you run a command inside your terminal. Linux will go and look inside the path variable and see if there exists such a command in any of these paths. So for me, I'm going to say in the pins current directory, path equals path, current directory. And now I can run uh, IP find and other stuff, and it's this one. Cool. Uh, some other quick things um, is we started introducing some a uh, feature that someone from the forums asked for, and it was just like, uh, can I get version information about what I have? You can see here I have Serial Pipeline 2.0, and leave if you type version. Oh, what? Neat. You know what? First plug the file. <laughs> <laughs> I normally tell you what uh, version devices we built against, and uh, that's the number. Yeah. So, uh, anyhow, that's the installation procedure. It's really easy. Um, so, now I'd like to talk about uh, data processing. My question for you guys is would you guys like to see MRO, uh, high rise, CTX? Uh, sorry, sorry, CTX, if you raise your hand. Oh, hey, that's actually pretty good. High rise. Smaller. Okay, and then uh, LRO, NAC. <laughs> ah, losers, you know. <laughs> right, CTX. Um, so CTX I actually didn't pre pre prepare for, but um, Fred showed up and he did a whole talk about CTX processing and higher rise processing and he provided me some IMG files. Um, do you guys know how to take an IMG and bring it into an ICQ format? Is that something I should cover? Speak up or he'll go forward. Might as well cover it? Okay. So, uh, well, to get these, you should you always use, I think, um, what is it, OE, NASA? Not that one. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay. Not that one. Orbital Data Explorer. It's like a Mars one. This guy. You can go here, you can go click, click data stuff, uh, products. Um, I'm going to get lost, but eventually you get to the point where you can download IMGs. Uh, Actually, with the backside options. Red, So these IMGs. Um, CTEX is kind of small. Um, it's only 40 and 35 megs. These are smaller ones. They're only about three to four times the size. Yeah. Uh, just, because of the, the link here, is pretty slow. I just pull small. Cool. Um, does anyone else have any other IMGs like on the hard drive they can share? You do these live. 
No, no. Okay. Um, so to bring this in, uh, there's two commands, uh, MRO CTX to ISIS. Um, and there's also another command that is uh, CTX cow. Uh, and this does radiometric calibration. It gets that where those kind of off-angle stuff gets dark, it'll bring that, that back up. Um, so it's kind of an even gain across these. Um, I like processing these things with uh, the GNU parallel command, which we use. Um, they'll fire up another process for each file that we use. So processing those all but, together would look something like. Right, but you don't need to do that. You can just, as Zach types aside, you can just process them serially as well, right? So you just do MRO CTX to ISIS from first cube, you know, from the first IMG to the to a, a cube file name. That's what we use. Yeah. And then you can do the CTX cal step separately. Uh, and you can even do CTX even odd if you feel so inclined. Uh, and finally the most important step is spike submission. This actually attaches um, the camera submission. That's running. Um, verify. Let's watch it here. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot the last one. Yeah. So, and, and also, it's important to note that the the documentation that we provide with the stereo pipeline there's a there's a I don't know how long it is. It's like a hundred page PDF file with all of Zach's and I's long form musings about how how stuff works. But in there is is a series of tutorials for for running through a uh, mock pair and also kind of step by step commands for for doing a CTX pair and a high rise pair. And, and the, oh. yeah. So if any of this goes by too fast, certainly stop and ask. But but it's oh it's yeah there yeah too. sorry feel free to ask questions. But I, I don't really have anything planned. So what is parallel for? Yeah. Parallel? Yeah. So most all the access commands are usually just a single threaded thing. But I have eight cores and I have two files in one process. So rather than do all this serially, I just had do this all in one command and parallel uh, spawn two processes that process each file independently. So after running that command, I now have um, these cal.qs, which are the spice niche and calibrated. Uh, CTX files. Okay. Basically a way to queue up commands. So rather than typing a command, waiting a minute, typing in another command, waiting a minute, right? Zach yeah. just stacks them all up, runs them, and then gets coffee and comes back. Yeah. And so these are our images. Um, okay. and, uh, I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm not a scientist. I'm here. You're at Mars. Mars. The, uh, <laughs> You look inside Gale Crater, so the top was the mound, the bottom was the northern rim actually. Um, uh, just east of the uh, normal landing area of Berkeley. So this is all the land to the uh, right hand side of the screen. This is this image pair that we used to collect um, to make sure we had good coverage across the world. Okay. So and that's the top part of the mound there. So there's definitely uh, a variety of uh, collapse and that's what we features. So it's like this is kind of a, a yeah, quite a, there's elevation here. Yes. On top, and it's flat. So to produce to you have these, um, I'm going to get rid of these intermediate files that I'm And you use the stereo command. Um, this is a bit above information you really need to know, but the stereo command itself, um, oh, sorry. Well, let's talk about the arguments. Stereo takes in both. Um, a left image, a right image, um, optionally takes in these camera files, crisis developers or ICE people don't even worry about these, and then takes an output file prefix, and you can put a slash directory on that as well, so it contains the files. And then we have some other important features like threads. So from the command line you can say, um, I would only like to use two threads because I'm doing other things. Another thing is you can turn off the big tip writing. We normally use big tips because usually the files that are writing get bigger than four gigs, especially our point cloud file, which is very large. It's it's, a, it's uh, four x y z, sorry, it's four doubles of every pixel in the image. So it gets very large. Um, now, what's kind of cool is the stereo command is actually just a Python script that calls five other commands for the five steps of stereo correlation. We have pre-processing. Um, Zach, can I talk to you there for a second? Yeah. Um, uh, thank I'm you for stopping me. Oh, I'm the stuff for Wes. So if you say no big tip, 
the adherences files, but they're going to exceed four gigabytes. Does it just split them up and then it uh, it'll break? Um, it'll fail. It'll just fail. What will happen is the GL driver will probably throw a bunch of warnings, and then I don't know what GL does. Underneath the hood, we're using GL driver files. Right. So, what's the advantage you have? Um, it's for people who there are some people who say no, it files that couldn't read. So, say if you're processing some ISIS. Anyway, because beyond the sort of thing. Yeah, well, I mean, for like small missions, um, like Mark A, you can get by with this. Uh, Cassini missions, you can get by with this. Um, if you're running as big tip, doesn't it just produce small big tips, which are really the Yeah. So, no, there's not. <laughs> I have a question. You mentioned that. Uh, Kind of a master program that runs a bunch of other programs. Yep. Can one run individual programs directly? Yeah, exactly. And that's why I'm pointing them out. Because what would be good for people who deploy this on like a cloud or any other thing, um, all these steps are not equal. Pre processing is very quick, um, correlation is pretty quick, stereo, the suffix of climate is very slow, and then determining on if you use map projection, uh, triangulation is very slow. If you didn't map project your images, triangulation is very fast for the most part. That's just because we have to do more math and set ISIS. Um, so what you could do is you could bash them up together. You can put all the fast processes together in one in like you know a five hour run, assuming if you have like time limits, and then you can make like a single job for every separate sort of point. So just so you can kind of like budget uh, how to spend your time on a cluster or some time management system. And the output of one command is the input to the next. Is that what's well? Happening? You use the same commands for every single one of them. So. I'm about ready to uh, run the whole process, the whole shebang, with. Uh, but yes, they, they can't be exact. They, they can't be piped together. Right. But each step outputs some files. But the next the file. step then reads. Then, right. So it's the output that I'm talking about, yeah. not piping. Right. Okay. So if you knew what the outputs were, one could effectively distribute this over a bunch of different machines. Sure. And yeah. Okay. That's what it is. So um, that might. If I were going to run the whole stereo process, then that's creating, um, taking these input images and then creating a point cloud file, not the DEM, but it's a raw point cloud file. I run the stereo command, but if, say if I only want to run the pre-processing step in this run, we can type PPRC, I'll change anything else, and we're good to go. Um, the pre-processing step, what it's doing is it's hacking statistics. Um, most importantly, it's gathering interest points. Um, it's figuring out how um, your images relate to each other. And I just realized I forgot to talk about the stereo settings file. Well. Yeah, but you'll get back to it. Okay. But the, uh, the, the thing to point out is that if this is the first time you're going to be using stereo, you can just use the stereo command. Don't worry about these, yeah. these other parts. It's later on when you decide, all right, I'm going to process 20 of these things on my cluster that you might want to think more about how you split up the workflow. Yeah. yeah. Nope. Yeah, sign that yeah. um, there, there are some benefits to it. Everything's indexed from the left, so you sh it'd actually be better for you on your hard drive if you made the smaller image the left. Smaller image, not necessarily with the lower mission. No, nah, the mission angle don't matter. No, Everything gets indexed right. via in the image domain, so yeah, the smallest image size should be left one. But if you wanted to drive uh, the image of the drive. No, it doesn't matter. You, you can. Did you say because ortho projection is a separate step yeah. at the end cost? Right. Did you say it was faster if it was map projected or not? So that's a bunch of strategy. Um, so we should find an example that fails, but it map projecting usually makes the correlation step easier. So it's, it's a trade, right? It's so a the trade-off map projection takes so long to start with. So well, no, no, no. It's, it's because when a, when images are map projected, we have to we have to do the reverse map to unproject it to get the pixel back into the camera to do the projection into space. But maybe it's not quite clear why you want to map project. What a map project yeah. does is it kind of puts everything kind of a, they look similar. So our correlator has less work to do. It's less searching. Right. So if you map project, the search becomes much smaller. We do it very quickly. Downside is is now the triangulation. That math becomes really hard because we have to work backwards, not only through our correlation, but then through the your map projection back into the original coordinates, and then back into right. So, lab. so in practicality, so, so it's a trade. Yeah. Um, so in practicality, 
uh, our suggestion, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, is to try and run it without map projection and see if you get a good result. Yep. And if you don't, then try map projection <laughs> yeah. and see if that gives you better correlation. Oh, totally. um, stuff is you can then project the DN. Oh, yeah, 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 DN, yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and again, uh, uh, we haven't mentioned this yet, Zach's going to talk more about it, but with the, also the first time, if you're going to work with high rise or really anything, crop out a small portion to test with. Because the first time you run an image through, you're going to be twiddling the knobs on these parameters. And it's much better if you have a, a total runtime of five minutes rather than an hour to determine that you, you got the, a number wrong or you need to adjust things. So Zach's going to talk about the knobs now. So yes. um, when I managed the fly over earlier, which I, I goofed about, is um, inside the stereo.h, when you said this, um, it talks somewhere right here uh, about a stereo file, minus s. And by default, it looks for something in the current directory called stereo.default. This is where most of our settings are hidden for how to, what parameters, what techniques to do for the correlation. Um, to get one, for this raw image that we just started with, um, there's an example stereo.default file that we can pull from the uh, Set them from the uh, the binaries that we just downloaded. So for me, it's inside this thing we have contract, and then inside examples, there's a stereo default example. Oh, copy here. Open that up, um, and you can see our alignment options. Um, map projection was one way to reduce the search between two images. You can also roughly align them via homography. And homography is uh, a linear transform between two guys, uh, two images. There's also epipolar. Unfortunately, epipolar is doesn't work for ISIS. It only works for our pinhole camera models. That'd be like MER or something else. Um, so for us, um, here it says alignment method none. It'd be better if we made that homography, and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Um, there's also some normalization stuff here. Still with the default, use the entire range. Um, and there's these pre-filter modes. Leave this all alone. It's all good. Um, don't mess with it unless you really know what you're doing. And then here is a cost metric. And these are in order of fast to, oh, no, no. Liar. Sorry. This is the fast, fast it is. It's for a difference. The absolute is a little bit better. And the normalized pro cost correlation is um, probably the slowest. The normalized cost correlation, it's a cost function um, that is immune to, uh, great, uh, to change in um, intensities. Um, so you can handle most of it. If you think that your images are uh, have the same kind of intensity values at the image correction, you can try your, your luck with absolute difference, and I'll go pretty fast. Um, I'm actually going to try it with the red images. The other thing here is the correlation kernel. Stereo correlation is performed by us sliding a window. We start with a window in the left image, and then we try to find a matching window in the right image, where the texture looks the same. This, uh, how big that window is, is defined by the core kernel uh, option. And I'm saying it's 25 pixels by 25 pixels. It's pretty large, but it'll, it'll do. Actually, let's make it small. Let's try it small. Uh, make it small, you can go faster. Make it too small, and there's not unique texture. So then the results will just blow up, and we can't get anything. Um, I'd actually stick with 25 by 25 in most cases. High rise, other than act, it'll work. The other here is the search range. And these are indexed on the left. So that means from a certain, like, say you're starting from the middle of the left image, uh, you go to the same index value in the right image, and we can search a maximum of negative 80 values to the left to positive value to positive 20 pixels. Um, here we've commented it out because we're going to have it do an automatic search. But you can define this if you'd like to. I don't recommend defining it. Is this the maximum of the power in the images? Yeah. Um, and parallax, sorry, it's uh, minimum horizontal, minimum vertical, maximum horizontal, um, and then maximum vertical. Uh, you can also define this uh, via the old style, H core min. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with HP1. I didn't like that, so I put it all on the Ross disagrees. So I make it keep it. So you're, you can specify it anyway. And you can also override individual parts of that box on the command line. The last bit is the subpixel refinement. So correlation gets us down to just an integer value. We can say, like, it's this pixel or that pixel. Subpixel refinement goes and says, OK, well, it's, it's a half pixel step. Oh, oh yeah. I'm just trying oh. to keep up the value, actually. No, no worries. Um, 
We're going to use parabola because it's very fast, but it's not very accurate. We'll see stair stepping kind of results. It'll look like stairs are on the DEM. Better would be used appline adaptive window Bayesian thing. Um, there's a whole paper on it if you guys want to see it. I don't think you guys really care. Um, you can select it by two, um, but that will actually just like add a day to our processing time. And I'm working on making it faster, but it's it's a lot of math. Um, and then finally, it has a subpixel kernel um, that did the same. Here I'm going to say we're filling holes. Um, these are just filtering. Don't ever mess with these. Transition, whatever mess with it. Um, if you listen to our note, if you look at my, my file here, you'll notice I kind of organized them. Um, I said preprocessing, and I still the command. Here we show correlation um, and refinement. All these settings that we're saying in this file, you can also do from the command line. So if I said um, stair preprocessing, what if I wanted to align via something else? Here you can, I, I, I typed my stage so I can see the help, but here you can see all the options available to me. I can see that from the command line, I can also type alignment uh, method uh, none. So if they conflict the command line with. Exactly. So you can override. Uh, but uh, I think that's as much as I want to cover. So now let's start processing um, this image. So I'm going to say stereo, my first image. Um, um, my other image, five. And um, I can put it in stereo too. And I'm going to tell it to use the stereo default file there, since it's not the regular name. It's going to start processing. Um, so, to calculate yeah. statistics, um, there's an underlying reason why I did that, but I forgot. Um, here, uh, anyway, now it's going to start calculating how to do the homomorphic line between these guys. Um, and it's going to do this via interest point detection. Um, this is something that we've done new. Um, it looks at your uh, satellite location and then the location of the ground. It looks at the datums. And it does a rough alignment of rotation. And from there, we do interest point detection. Uh, again, without solving for scale or, or rotation. For those of you who know about interest points, algorithms, this is how we're getting better results. Is we're not letting surf or sit to solve for scale and rotation. But um, for most of you, you don't even know about this. So here you can see it's processing left, right. This means we got interest points in the left image, the right image. Here we got the descriptors. Uh, and then all of a sudden, we oh, sorry, the reason why there's extra, extra information here because I have debug information all the time. Oh well. Um, but uh, here we match all of a sudden. Uh, we do triangulation, and then we calculate some matrix, some homography that aligns our two images together. So I'm going to ignore that this thing's still processing. I'm going to go take a look at uh, these aligned images. Uh, so I put it in CTX. Oh, actually, I need that to check. Is that the result of the processing? Yeah. Alright. So these extra folders here you guys shouldn't just see. <laughs> this one go away. You're on a server. Yeah. Alright. So um alright, it's already on a correlation step, but I'm gonna ignore that it's on correlation. Um it immediately right wrote the uh, left and right images. It has its own copy with its own normalization. It created these mask images, which I'll show you. And they created these sub uh, versions of it, where it's just reduced down to uh, something that's, I think, the width is 10.4 pixels. The reason we create these sub-images is it's going to be used as a seed for our correlation algorithm, but it's also a good source of uh, debugging information for you. So you can go and see what the preprocessing step just did. So let's go take a look at those files. So I'm going to go into Gale, I go into my, um, I don't you know if you saw my stereo command, but I, uh, I put everything inside the stereo folder. Um, and then anything with a my sub, is uh, a sub-image that sh should be able to open up with normal viewers very easily. Um, L and R files are the left and right files that we're going to use for correlation. So I'm going to go look at the... Um, and again, there's a there's an appendix in the book that details what all the different files are that spits out of stereo. Hello. So there's a left image, nothing happened to it, and then here's our aligned right image. And you can see that Amar, if you did a pretty darn good job. So there's only a little bit of movement, and that's what the correlator will have to figure out. Um, 
Um, that's just uh, remaining. Sorry, there's original parallax from that. What's still moving is what the correlator has to make up for. Because that's what the correlation stuff is solving for. When we uh, comes time for triangulation, we take our disparity map, which we solved on top of L and R. We undo the tomography, and we go back towards the original camera coordinates, and then we triangulate from there. So as good as L and R, those subimages align, that means less work for the correlator. Uh, the better that is, the more likely we're going to have a good time. If that looks really bad, they don't line up at all, everything else is going to break up, and that stereo pair is probably not going to work. So you should just give up, most likely. It was a homography. So in the order of complexity, it's, it's um, affine, uh, has no perspective. Homography has some perspective. Um, so that was a homography. Is there any uh, option to add um, an image-specific prefix to all of the names of the subclass so that you can process all of the directly? Yes. You, yeah. you, you customize what, it's, what the first yeah. part is called. I, uh, I, mean, I just called it stereo that time, and um, that's why they all start with stereo. Let's see where it was. Here's the command I ran, yeah. um, and then right here was my output prefix that I defined, and I, I named it, because things in the stereo folder with the stereo. Got it. I'm uncreative. Okay. <laughs> um, so while we were talking, it went and started doing correlation. Um, all this information here. Um, some new cool things it's doing is it says it's now calculates a low resolution disparity. This is another point in which you can go and take a look to see if it's doing the right thing. Um, um, and it shows up inside this D sub file. If we try to open that directly, um, it looks weird. And it's hard to understand. Mostly just because it's it's uh, values that are beyond the display range of the display. So we're gonna have to normalize it in some terms. You can use your favorite command, g at all. Uh, we actually provide a disparity debug program. So, right. I'm in another terminal. Um, to avoid doing this all the time, you can actually put this in like a, a startup script. There we go. So I say disparity debug and run it on ESO. It goes and normalizes my two images. Um, you can kind of see what our disparity range actually ended up being. We had a 21, 22 pixels horizontal, vertical. That's after the mark beat, so it got smaller. But you're just... um, and now we can go and it created two more files, D sub H and that, and B. Does it make any sense? I'm sorry, but yeah. Does it make any sense knowing that information to then go back and run it with that, those parameters? Well, those are for the low resolution ones. They don't quite right. apply. But here you can start seeing our disparity. So this is the horizontal disparity, um, and then here's the vertical disparity. Um, you can see that it looks like most of the image is going to correlate. There is noise here. That didn't work, and that didn't work. The interesting thing to know about this is they broke up in two extremes. This broke up where it's really dark here. And the back end corner kind of broke up with vertical. So it actually kind of hints that our search range wasn't big enough. That the automatic search didn't do the best job it could. But I think it did. And, and that makes sense if you if you looked at those images, because that those bounds that's where the, the the most topography is the, the, the you know where the mound is on one end and where the, the crater is. We're looking at like a saddle, other. and then the majority of the image is in the saddle. Right. So interest points mostly show up in the saddle, mm -hmm. and that's where search range got defined. Yep. Um, I would call this about as good as you probably want to try for with Sierra Pipeline. We're not looking for the best. Uh, but you can get better, right? You can get better. At the expense of more processing time, right? Yeah, you increase the more size, you might get those. But uh, so it looks like it's going to do a very good job. Um, and then after it finishes correlating, um, uh, it actually does the full resolution here. Uh, and you can actually see that it refined its own search range instead of the from. What are the interest points said? Now it's using this. That is the actual search range. If we're going to increase it again, we actually increase the numbers from here. We go take these numbers and uh, we do something like this. Copy paste that. Then uh, go to my serial default. And take the score search and type. You can use commas as well, instead of spaces. And you can start increasing these numbers if you like, so you can go, okay. 
maybe 100. And then uh, I think it was extreme of the vertical as well, so maybe this should be I think it was and then we can redo it. Um, and then it went on to do refinements. Um, Parabola refinements very quick. You can see that it finished in 30 seconds. In filtering. And then it triangulated. Um, so now when we go and look inside uh, stereo, there's this PC file. This is a point cloud file. And, and what it actually is, it's, it's a, an image that is in the same index as the left image, where every pixel value, the red is the x, y, is the x location, the green is the y, the z is, uh, sorry, the blue is the z. And there's actually a fourth channel. It's actually triangulation here. If you wanted to, you could hijack that and do your own thing. Um, that might be useful. It's kind of, it's like analogous to the XYZ product that comes from MER. Uh, but but if you get, naively try and look at it, you, it won't display it. Um, yeah, I think I was actually just throwing error. Yeah. So. But that's why we provide these other tools. Yep. Now we're ready to convert to uh, an EDM. In the past, we just said, uh, you can look at the options, sorry. My station was working for all of them. But and pass would say, uh, tell it you're using Mars data, and sorry, the actual arguments you can go look at uh, in our documentation. And then you would say, uh, and then give it the point cloud. And the defaults, uh, Mars is actually a spherical datum, um, and it's going to do echo rectangular. And it'll start. Um, and actually, sorry, let's actually tell it to make some new products. Let's also make a new thing you can do now is you can say, make me an error image as well on top of the DEM. Make me also uh, an ortho image, and then you give it um, your left image. Give it the L the L tip. Or Can you, you also give it the R tip? This is the no, the R does not work. It's only it's only the L. Okay, works. so then that does matter. So that, that that was a question that came up before. If you want to make an ortho photo later, whichever image you want to use as the texture for your ortho needs to be the left image. Yeah. So this is a, it's a really naive one. Um, you, there's another command that's called orthoproject, which is not naive. But it's using the actual point cloud to determine where the left uh, image pixel should go. So it's not actually doing the, the full projection. It's cheating. Since you already have the point cloud and it's already in the index of the left image, you already know where the, the, the pixels of the left image should show up to your head. Um, so it's accurate. Yeah, it's taking it's, advantage it's of good. information. If, um, if your jigsaw is really bad, um, then ortho projection and uh, the ortho image result and the DM are going to uh, not show the same results. That is hard to explain. But I can show with. Uh, oh, it'll come back. Maybe. Or not. Um, it's going to draw. Oh, that's why it didn't work. <laughs> never appear though, it's still processing. So to explain why this doesn't work is, imagine we have an inaccurate result. Um, I have a right image. They see the same feature, so they're going to draw a vector to each other. But in the 3D domain, these vectors don't come very close to each other. When we triangulate this point, we use the midpoint algorithm. And so we're going to actually get a 3D point that's somewhere here. Um, and you'll have some surface, I guess, so maybe a bunch of them. But the ortho image will go and say, well, since that 3D point was just associated with that pixel here, it will automatically apply that pixel to that location. But since these are improperly jigsawed correctly, um, if you use the ortho project command, you'll instead get this pixel slightly over to the right that would show up in that location. If you jigsaw these two together, where the rays actually line up perfectly, um, you won't have that problem anymore. But if they're bad, you'll see the divergence. In either case, I think um, the ortho image result produces a good enough result um, that is accurate for most purposes. Have you got any plans to uh, introduce a piece of code to uh, find the best fit of all of the uh, vectors across the scene? In other words, to do an on-the-fly correction of pointing. 
No, we don't have that. We do have the ability, though, it's in the code that you can actually do, uh, instead of doing midpoint triangulation, you can do a, uh, a golden, it's called the gold standard method by uh, Hartley. Um, basically, to find the, the location of the three point, you reduce the reprojection error in the two images, but you don't move the cameras. And that will get a different result than midpoint algorithm. Yeah. Um, and it's considered the better result. Unfortunately, though, that requires a lot of camera projections. And since ISIS is very slow, that's the depth of the algorithm. The triangulation suddenly goes up tenfold uh, in processing time. That least squares result is only really acceptable for something like MER or Digital Globe, in which we have an in house camera model um, that is optimized. So, uh, while we're talking, point to the end finished. Um, it did a bunch of stuff. You can see it's georeference information. Um, I don't know how familiar you guys are with georeference information, but it's usually an app line transformation that relates pixels to some map projected coordinates, and then there's the map projected coordinates. So, here you can see my datum, it's spherical. Um, I will come back to that later because I know people don't like spherical marks. <laughs> um, but we created a bunch of cool stuff. So here we have a DEM file. Um, you can use GDAL to uh, basically operate the, on this and make hill shades or in color maps. Um, I'm instead just going to use our in-house utility, which is just called Hill Shade. Um, the only benefit it has is that it's better at guessing parameters and it's multi-threaded. So it finishes pretty quickly. And we can go and take a look at that, that illustrate the result. This is our DEM that we just produced. Um, and it looks pretty good at this scale. Wait till we zoom up, because then it looks like crap, because that's what parabola looks like up close. Use our fancy subpixel refinement, the result gets better. Um, but uh, yeah, these lines, that is the search setting. Did you have fill holes on that? No, I turned it off. Okay. So if you turn on fill holes, these smaller holes will go away, uh, and they'll be interpolated results. Um, the other cool thing we do produce is a triangulation error map. It's called a, this VM error. Um, if you want to view that, it's it's actually in units of the error in meters. So we're actually going to have to uh, apply some sort of color scale to it. So I'm going to uh, color map it. Color map is another utility uh, that we use to convert some uh, arbitrary value to some color. So I'm going to take in stereo, uh, DEM error, tip. I'm going to give it a lookup table, uh, and we provide a really good one um, inside our tarball that we shipped to you. Uh, so, oh no. Should have made a triangulation error lookup table. Uh, before I run it, let me show you what that file looks like. Um, I'm pretty sure this is standard because I think GL supports this as well. All this is, is these are uh, values. Uh, zero error corresponds to uh, white. This is red, green, blue. Um, and then I'm going up kind of within a logarithm scale so we can kind of see how our error works. Um, but the important bit is. Uh, Blue is 10 centimeters, uh, green is 1 meter, and uh, yellow is 10 meters, and then red is 100 meters. So let's go in. Oh, I'm going to colorize. Um, scouting statistics. Uh, while I'm talking, I can also show you. The DRG. DRG is just our earth projection result from point DM. So its result looks like that. Um, that white boundary, that's just preview how it operates. But that's the projection on the green. Um, and that's a GeoTIF, so you can basically go and pop it into whatever you want to use afterwards. Um, and black, um, I think it's listed in the file. So uh, let's take a look at that. Alright, um, and now let's look at the uh, DM error. Um, and it's red. So most of our pixels came together within probably like 80 meters of that in yellow. It's not very good. This model would uh, do well to have a jigsaw formed on it. And jigsaw, you just run that before you came to the stereo command. 
and then just run save again. Um, you can actually uh, redo save try. It'll be fine. So. Does that make sense, or have you want to go back? From ISIS, or is this is run on Jigsaw? What? No, it's ISIS is Jigsaw. For sure. Oh, this is ISIS is Jigsaw. Yeah. Um, use their bundlesmith utilities, and I guess they're gonna have a tutorial uh, Wednesday, so I'm not even gonna bother covering them. Um, if you like, um, I have some tutorials on my personal website, which I can point out. And there's an example in the docs, right? Uh, yeah. There's also, oh, hey, yeah. Put that in the docs. It's awesome. Because yeah. uh, <laughs> I need to put it in the docs. <laughs> Sorry, Ross is like my uh, conscience. <laughs> it's like people won't get this. I'm like, yeah, they should have <laughs> no. Um sorry. Uh, there we go. We have a bundle chapter. Explain what bundle is, the complexities of it, how it can bite you in the back, and then we have a little tutorial about how to process some imagery some commands. Um, and we use it with macro. Uh, sorry, with mock imagery. So, what sort of error are you quoting there? Is that the absolute error relative to the spheroid? Is that the, um, no, that's the triangulation error. Triangulation error. So, it's just an interpolation? No, it's, no. it's just how close those rays came together. Right. Oh, okay. So, right. so, that's, so, that's the difficulty. You can't use that value as saying, this is how accurate my DEM is. Yeah. It's only one error in the system. So, only use it as a relative measurement. So, if it was high, don't trust the DEM. If it's low, that's good, but it can still be placed in the wrong spot. So basically, the value of pointing is the best algorithm. Sorry? So basically, the pointing of the space bar, pointing the algorithm in space yeah. is the, the, the less algorithm. Right, but that, yeah. that doesn't have, doesn't particularly, it's, it's not the final word on the absolute error of yeah. any given point. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a little, it's uh, maybe we should system. call it something besides DEM error that may lead yeah, down the wrong, um, the wrong right. path. I, I, I call it relativistic system. error. Um, I call it right intersection. <laughs> okay. Oh, intersection error? Intersection. Yeah. I like that. This distance. Yeah. Notes. Oh, intersection. Okay. Actually, well, most people. <laughs> uh, that's somewhere. Give me notes. But uh, I'll write it down. The stereo there. information that you produce is is in many ways uh, capable of doing a much better job than Jigsaw does, at least on a relative basis. Uh, Jigsaw is only as good as. Um, it's, it's a block adjustment. So it's for pet well. and in purposes, it's for pet you use the actual stereo intersections in order to do the jigsaw, then you'd be doing it in the correct image of printing space. Yeah, but, but but if you did that for every pixel intersection, the mathematical complexity would blow up. That's not that bad. Yeah, people are done it. But we can't do it with can no, you can't do it with ISIS. I mean, even stereotype. Uh, no, it involves a caramel. As soon as it involves a mm. caramel, that's ISIS code, and that yeah, and that caramel is not very. Um, and uh, they're going to work on it. Uh, but right now, also, is with the ISIS stuff. Uh, the triangulation is all single-threaded. Everything else in the program is multi-threaded because ISIS is not fit safe. We don't do that. So. Stuff like that will become more plausible as ISIS becomes a multi-threaded algorithm. Or program. Uh, one of the last things I want to show you um, for CTX is um, it's we can take this DEM we produce. Oh no, no, there's two things I got to show you. But the first thing is we can take this whole shape that we, we produce, which is a, a geotiff. We can make that into a um, into Google Earth. Uh, we can make in, uh, make a game out of that, um, which I think GDLR has resources for maybe. I don't remember. Um, we have a command called yeah. images of future. Um, and you say, I'm going to have put KML, and then you give it the EM, and off it goes, generating a KML overlay. And while it's going, I'm going to go ahead and open it. And oh, we're not actually quite ready to open it yet. That's good for me. It has to make a file that has the same name as the folder. And we're ready to go. Wait for it. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Impatience. Come on. <laughs> but I, I'm going to pass to keep you busy. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to subset that CPX to all those areas where we have bad correlation and then 
increase the spoiler? Yeah. Just, just try it on a small set, like one of the craters with a small Actually, shotgun. just cropping it uh, would probably force the interest points to just work in that certain area. Because uh, we're looking for a monography that best fits the whole thing. Um, monography is not a good. Well, we get interest points everywhere, but the uh, the alignment step is still a monography. Anyway, you, know, you can crop it with the uh, with the crop commands in ISIS, and then you can run that back through your pipeline. And we people list interest points. People list interest points. Um, Use another method. Uh, you can provide an external match file. Um, match files, unfortunately, though, are proprietary. Well, it's not proprietary. It's just a binary format we have. It's not user friendly. It's possible. Um, you could you could write file an issue. Extractor. I mean, as long as you have one request, you can go through the ones. Uh, I'm expecting. Hey, look, it, it finished. So now we can go and open this up inside. Well, we provided software to take match points out of the spare pipeline into ISIS, but we never gone the other way. No, we can read ISIS control nets. Is that what you're asking? We used to at one point in time, not since the new control oh, network. Oh, um, <laughs> at one point in time, we had a bunch of control network utilities that we were thinking about making public, but there's just not enough time and much to do such a thing. Um, where where'd you go? You need to have a high screen mode. Screen mode. If one work below a thousand to four by seven hundred sixty-eight, and you are eight hundred by six hundred. Is that like a dependent tool? Uh, yeah, it's, it just can't display it enough. On the desktop, basically, it's going to be interaction. Isn't that cool? So, that should work with a thousand twenty four by seven sixty nine. I should get to the next one. If it does, it's probably down. You are getting the speed. Alright, where'd it go? You didn't open it up like I told you to. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Go back there. And this is our 3D model. Um, cool. and sorry, I was looking at the friends earlier, so it's turn the thought. And yeah, there's our 3D. Yeah. Um, you can get settings to line up. There's jigsaw stuff, though, uh, in my opinion. So, no, so the other thing I want to point out is um, so most people don't like my projection parameters or the auto dynamic stuff. And they're right, it's bad. Um, so one thing we've recently added inside um, the whole shebang is uh, point .dm now accepts a, a TSRS option. So you can treat it just like a TSRS option inside Beetle Warp. You can give it POSH4 strings, um, or you can even do um, IAU 2000 projections. So let's go spatial reference. In WKT? Um, yeah, we can bring those in too. So that also works. Um, we're actually just calling data on it. So here I can go and say, I like that because I don't know what it is, but it sounds good. <laughs> um, um, you guys can go back off. <laughs> but we would go and say, uh, PM, TSRS, um, and then I would drop in IU2499. And then I give it the uh, point cloud again that I want to process. And so it said, yep, if you don't decide for that, it went back to a WKT files underneath the hood. And now it's going to project it on. Um, this way, you'll, you'll see that now it uses a non screen control. So that was um, pretty much CTX in a nutshell. Um, high rise, I think, hit the next best. Want to go look at high rise? Uh, you can use it in the sense that you can map direct images onto that pre existing BTM uh, in ISIS. And then you feed that back into stereo. And that would help us. That would reduce the circuit. Um, you would do that via, that's kind of a complex spice command. Sorry, uh, ISIS command. So that would happen inside um, the spice image step. There is a shape model. And you would go and switch that over to user, and then the model would have to be a cube file. Um, yeah, okay, but if you, if you, I didn't mean that, that file, 
I don't have it. We need to keep track of everything. So, sorry, maybe that should be the next step. I can actually redo this whole entire step, but we can map reject first. And that will reduce our search space again. This one worked pretty darn well with um, non map projected, so it was cool. But let's try it with maps. So, so your stereo DM tip is uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, let's go look at that. It's in. It's a. It's close. Yeah. Um. Is there a way to get this back to ISIS? Not easily. Um. I've never done it. That would be really useful. Yeah. Well, well, quite a lot of people just will ever reject it. Yeah. There's problems with that. Most just because um, ISIS writing files is attached to their logging system. The logging system is attached to their GUI system. And then after that, I freak out and it makes my executables balloon. Um, so writing queue files with ISIS's own files is not easy. For developers to do. I have to change everything about how I handle command lines just to get right function. There's some tricks, but there are ISIS side tricks. Probably take to think about too much. Have you guys are, has well, anyone done that? Well, I created a process for GDAL. Or with someone else? GDAL. Use GDAL, you make a raw file. Because GDAL, isn't that? It's not fully supported, right? No. no. Now you can use all to ISIS and then yeah. you update the, the map the map's rejection. Okay. Oh you raw to ISIS and then you bring it back in via yeah, ISIS is on Raw to ISIS yeah. use GL to uh, be and be raw file. Yep. Take that, raw to ISIS, then you use map lab to sign the map Okay. Well, well I guess that one way. Or if you really want to use the API, you can use another image because that's the same coordinate system. Place the file what? Yeah. Where are you linking against QT? That's not the problem. It's just the fact that uh, their logging system is then tied into this application class. And I don't use that at all. Uh, well, we are the same problem with the Okay. Yeah. I mean, since now that we build ISIS ourselves, I can actually start editing the ISIS myself. But that seems like an unsupported. Yeah, just extract the writer. Yeah, that might be easier. But, um, or I just comment out the whole logging functionality I have inside it so it doesn't refer back to those objects. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to go on such a hate test of ISIS. ISIS is otherwise a very good uh, library to use. It provides a lot of functionality that I don't want to implement. Like map laws. But I want to show you how to do map projection. You can you can produce um, 3D models from map projected files. And that's map projecting files is done with the cam to map command. And again, I'm going to use my favorite utility in the world. Someday you guys will love it. Someday. Um, that might actually take a while. So I'm going to have to talk about something else. Well, it happens to say that. You map project doesn't have results, so we're actually just not creating a Yeah, so this time we're going to map project the inputs, um, and then we're going to create 3D from them. And we can do that because ISIS makes the whole map projection layer transparent to us. It kind of messes with the results a little bit, but usually it's an improvement. Um, uh, it'll make correlation faster. It'll make triangulation slower. So it's a trade-off between these two guys. If your correlation was huge and took way longer, yeah. Are there any uh, available imaging systems that support the ISIS that you serve or talk about struggles with? It seems like it's suitable everything. Um, mostly it's just um, we struggle with uh, so people don't usually keep track of the convergence angle, and that's the angle between two stereo pairs. 
Um, and they don't keep track of that information. When it gets really small, we're going to struggle. At least there's not going to be any output, and lots of other errors will happen. And usually people who are processing Cassini never keep track of that. And they think they got three units, we don't actually have to be. Because we're coming up from the same name. Um, that usually causes problems. Um, Hello NAC is probably our most difficult, mostly just because there doesn't exist. I don't know of a process for how to no cross the left and right CCDs into one common CCD. Um, something that's not immediately apparent is their pipeline doesn't usually correlate the last like two pixels on the edge of an image. Well, that creates a groove when you're using Hello NAC images. It creates this line down the middle of things that you can correlate. So when you process Hello NAC imagery, you're going to do you're going to take what looked like just two st uh, stereo pair, and you're going to make four stereo pairs out of it. You do an LE to LE combination, an RE to RE combination, then LE to RE, and RE to LE. Um, that didn't make sense. You've never worked with Bellow and Axe, but um, <laughs> that's the, I'm, I'm pronouncing the extension on the plot. Yeah. What CCD it came from. So there's no reason none of this should work on, say, CCD SS. Uh, SS? CCD ISS. Oh, it works in CCD ISS. Um, it doesn't work so well, like when we have an example in the docs when we look at Rhea, yeah. uh, and it's a full on shot of the moon. Um, the edges of the moon are not going to do so well. And also, any time where we kind of bleed out the CCD, we don't do so well. Cassini is usually just not very. It's not really many pixels. We like more pixels. Um, um, yeah. pixels. So, camera maps can take a while, so I'll talk about higher resolution. So one question is, so is a new age then, because like the Bell Road Max are not low emissions too. Have you had any, any experience recently with that, or is it working okay? Is there any problem? Offset illumination. Well, because that's, you know, that's a lot of that can all around when they would make it. Oh, yeah, sorry. Plus, 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 plus that as well. Um, we like, sorry. If you want to make Sarah Pipeline happy, you get uh, like a 30 degree uh, convergence angle about that. You can gray off that, it doesn't really matter so much. And then you want to have similar illumination. Um, you do not handle light from another 180 degrees at a different spot. Um, it might get something, but most likely it will fail. To get around that, we need a new cost function. We don't, uh, normalized cost population doesn't do that. So HRC is a Yeah, HRC is actually pretty awesome. Um, and I've had a lot of success. I think there's two pan chromatics. Um, one. So, no, sorry, it's pan in the middle. And the, I remember, there's like. Pipe channels have the same filter. Yeah. As the pipe but it's a lower resolution. Okay. 40 minutes. Oh, yeah? Oh. Yeah. oh. Maybe I haven't had much luck. Yeah. Maybe I'm using like 40 and 80. Well, I do pretty well. Oh, okay. HTC is actually a very good product because the illumination is fine, but it has a lot of compression artifacts. So as you get close to Terminator, their pipeline blows up because uh, whatever compression average they're using, it gets a lot of artifacts right at the Terminator. We don't do so well. But the ISIS camera model is sufficient. Uh, it's the ISIS camera model for HSC. I don't know if that matters. Oh, but it doesn't matter because what it means is you have to use a predictive kernel. Right, but it doesn't need to export files. Okay. So, yeah, we only support ISIS support HRC, so you have to, that means the pointing's off. Um, and its placement's wrong. Do you get better than DLR? No, I don't think we get better than DLR. Uh, DLR has a pretty awesome algorithm. I'd like to make that public at some point. Look, it's tuned. I mean, it's also tuned. They tuned it. Well, I think they're, they, have a, they have a mutual information cross function as well. I forgot the arguments. We, we, well. could, we could probably do better if we implemented the yeah, story files and stuff. That would require yeah. Um, yeah, sorry. Camera map is still going. So, uh, high rise. High rise comes down to a lot of files. Um, and the process these guys, you need to, it's best that you convert these all into a single file. And I already have some alpha files here. Um, in a temporary directory, we provide some executables called uh, IEDR to Mosaic. This creates a no proj mosaic of all those files. And basically, you run that with uh, all those IMG files. And it will call the uh, appropriate the
Oh, didn't expand. Where did you? Oh, right, because I'm not in technical. There we go. It's gonna run all the ISIS commands that you need to do, um, and it's multi-threaded. Um, by default, it only uses four threads. Um, I have more, so uh, let's use more. Threads, eight. And I'll run you through the whole entire stack. Um, this actually takes a very long time. That's why I compared it in advance. I'm cool. <laughs> and uh, uh, this is what they look like on the output. They're all calibrated. Um, That might just be too big. Oh, oh, I don't think it's too big for QBO. Just makes it a lot. It's a big file. <laughs> Um, this is going to be like the biggest file we're going to process inside um, zero pipeline. We can actually go bigger um, because we're tiled processing, um, and with the new correlator, we are pretty memory efficient. But it's not something you want to run on your laptop to go bigger. Uh, we're we're going to try. Let's see what happens. Um, oh, hey, can the map actually finish? So here, we'll just stay on this. We map to the files. Oh, right. We need maps. Let's So that's the high res image. Um, no, that's a CTX image. Yeah. Oh, that's a CTX image. All right, sorry. Uh, high res is still going. Oh, hey, that's, that's a new question, isn't it? What, the progress bar? No, no, the, the Q view is all linked back together. No, it doesn't spawn another process. Well, yeah, no, it doesn't spawn another process. That might be. Yeah. Hey, array ice and bubbles. Um, it's because they threaded QB. Okay, so that's what our files look like. Um, you can tell they're in some map projection. I, I imagine it's probably semi-soil because it's in the default. Um, and running stereo on it. 